Okay, it has been an honor to listen to the previous speaker trying to explain to us uh, about these literacy issues. And uh, my, uh, what I'm going to see is how we can promote this literacy in a way of transition, and uh, specifically using the open education. Uh, in our schools, normally our teachers will come and give us books, pamphlets, exercises. Uh, these are some kind of open resources that our teachers are using. But uh, we are in a very fast transforming world and the world is changing fast. Next slide, please. So uh, in this world, the, the previous one, in this world, uh, we have uh, technology that is changing very fast. We have uh, climate change and we have globalization. So previously the community in India were limited to India. The community in Africa are limited in Africa, but uh, Currently, we are speaking of the communities that are interlinked, and all of them, they need to be in one place, leaning in a sink. So how are we going to do this, and how are we going to use our resources to do this? When we are speaking of open education, we are speaking of uh, a philosophy behind sharing things in the open. When you create a resource, let's say, Hamisi is in Tanzania, dealing with youth, Iman is, Iman is in India dealing with youth. One of them is creating a resource that can be used in both places, but how do they share? Therefore, open education gives us the core principle, core principles that when you want to create a resource for literacy, you have to observe a date. The first one is accessibility. When you create a resource, can it be accessible? Can, be, can it be flexible? Can people collaborate? And is it affordable? Because when we are dealing with youth, the first thing to come in mind is how they can access it. How can they afford it? Is it for free? Are they paying for it? If they pay, how much? And uh, whenever you're going to, to deal with these resources, there are few things you have to, to regard. If you're giving someone something for free, can they retain it? Not today you're giving them the resource, tomorrow you want it back. Or when they use it in the work, you want to get paid but can they reuse in other instances? Let's say today Hamis or Iman or Egla gave us a resource to use. Are they going to allow us to use the same resource in another way? Are they going to allow us to remix the same resource in other ways? And uh, when we are going to, to look on a case study, uh, there was one of the programs done by UNESCO in Zambia. So this uh, program, initially it went into a local place trying to see how are we going to use open educational resources to improve literacy. Initially, only 30% of adults and 10% of youth were literate. They didn't have the teachers, they didn't have the infrastructure, they didn't have uh, the resources. So over a period of uh, five years, they were given the computers uh, and they were given the local resources written in their languages and uh, to make sure that those infrastructures are useful to them. It was not only using electricity, but the computers were solar powered. In a term of five years, adult literacy rose from 30% to 70%, more than 50%, while the youth rose for more than 100%, from 10 to 50%. So let us take this, and let us try to think of this in our communities. What if we do a small program of using our resources an open way to increase the literacy. And uh, one key note to, to remind ourselves when we use open education, it doesn't matter in which language. Whether you do it in your local language, whether you do in a language that is regional language or international language, the most important thing for you is to create something and share out there for people to use, reuse, remix, and as well as redistribute. And thank you.